So today I wanted to talk about what is happening in the Georgia midterm election. So Herschel Walker is currently the Republican candidate for the Georgia senatorial race. Herschel Walker is a former running back from Wrightsville, Georgia. And although he grew up in Georgia, he spent most of his life, his adult life, living in the Texas area. He played college football at the University of Georgia. I am totally not a football person. I am not a resident of Georgia. So the hype around this man, never heard of him. <laughs> Don't know the man, all right? I do think that FD Signifier has talked about, because, well, FD Signifier went to college in Georgia, um, even though he's from Chicago, and he now lives in Georgia. And he's definitely talked about, like, you know, being disappointed in somebody who he remembers from his childhood coming into being, like, a fully alt-right politician. He won the 1980 College Football Championship. I don't know what division, girl. I just wrote down 1980 Championship. College football, that man won it. He was awarded the Heisman Trophy in 1982. In his professional NFL career, he played the Dallas Cowboys. Let me get these cities right. The Minnesota Vikings, that's a state, not a city. The Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants before coming back to the Dallas Cowboys. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1999. And so it does seem like, I don't know, I'm not going to make any suggestions about the football career, baby, because I don't watch football. I'll be there for the chicken wings, okay? That's... My knowledge of football is what dip do you have for me to dip my flats in? That's my knowledge, okay? Is it fair to say he was an early arriver? I think he was just your status quo parallel to the OJ Simpson. He ain't kill nobody though, but he married a white woman. He's, he's been married to two white women now, okay? This is his first wife, Cindy Grossman, who he married in 1983 and divorced in 2002. And yes... If you are not familiar, these two are the parents of Christian Walker. He is currently married to Julie Blatchard, who he married in 2021. And I think it's interesting because there was a lot of discussion about Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election, having stood by her man, Bill Clinton, but there are plenty of white women across Across the political aisle, there's plenty of women in general who are just standing by their partner in an effort to get them elected to political office. The accusations that are just being thrown at Herschel Walker, huh, is, is, the, is the lifestyle that nice for Julie to stick around? But she's standing by her man. She's standing by her man. Now he has his first son, who is the most publicly known Christian Walker was born in 1999 and his son has gone on to become like this conservative darling. Actually, he's been, Christian's been heavily memefied. We'll, we'll, we'll look at this. I'm totally 10 out of 10, not a fan of Christian Walker. He hasn't, his last video is his call out of his father, Herschel Walker. We'll get into that later. He hasn't posted since the beginning of October. He is gay, but is, Pride Month does not represent me and plenty of other people. Celebrating who you're attracted to does not make sense. Forcing other people to celebrate you for who you are attracted to does not make sense. It is not an accomplishment nor an award. Furthermore, stop expecting people to respect you if you shut down traffic to walk around the streets barely clothed. This has turned into something way beyond attraction. Christian Walker just reminds me, oh, here he goes talking. To celebrate who you sleep with, newsflash, nobody cares. You have all your rights, now shut up. You take a pride month out to run around the streets with no- Okay, that's enough of that. He has been memefied, and I actually think the memification of people with very harmful politics is violent to the oppressed groups whom their politic discusses. Somehow- the bigotry that Christian is so invested in is harmful to his own identity, which I think people then want to like laugh at because ha ha, aren't you gay? And aren't you very feminine? And aren't you very sort of like out there with it? Mm, people start to follow it. People find it funny. People find it amusing, whatever. When it comes to Christian Walker, he just so thoroughly reminds me of my mom telling me, cause you know, I was a child of the nineties. 
growing up and I had black homegirls who only dated white boys because they wanted to have mixed or biracial children because they thought they would, you know. The 90s, definitely, there was definitely a currency around this idea that having biracial children meant you would have like a prettier family. And my mom being like, light skinnedness does not equal attractiveness. There are plenty of ugly biracial people. And I think of that every time I see Christian Walker. Very, very ugly. Inside and out. He's just not a physically attractive person. I'm sorry. We're going to dabble in. I don't even know what ism that is when it comes to Christian Walker. I'm diving into it. But let's get back to his daddy because that's who we really here to talk about. Now, the New York Times visited his hometown in an article that was recently posted this past month. And it kind of talks about the makings of Herschel Walker's political background. You know, that in Wrightsville, Georgia, very few of the Black residents are supporting his candidacy. And you can actually see the racial divide when you go back to his hometown. And it they the New York Times makes the suggestion that this is rooted in the way he was brought up as a darling football player. And they get a quote from one of the teachers who was his noted mentor, white woman, yes. As a student in school, his role in society was not to solve the racial problems of the world. And Herschel himself states that I could never fully be accepted by white students. And the African-American students either resented me or distrusted me for what they perceived as my failure to stand united with them, regardless of whether they were right or wrong. That separation would continue throughout my life with the only reasons for it differing from situation to situation. He added, I never really liked the idea that I was to represent my people. And it's interesting because like, what do you think makes you a valid candidate for a senatorial race? Aside from the Republicans in Georgia are trying to fight back against the advocacy and voter registration work that organizations like the one Stacey Abrams runs and a handful of other women in the state of Georgia who are really doing the work and, you know, definitely need to be acknowledged. The GOP in Georgia is trying to push back against this, you know, this great effort of voter registration and engagement with minority communities that has happened. You could translate it to like what's happened in the UK with the first Indian prime minister, who's a conservative, what happens with in the United States where we get these like kind of exceptionally exceptional minority politicians who are put up as the darling of the Republican Party, often when there's some sort of aggressive force coming from the Democratic side. But it's interesting that the voter registration Advocacy work has really made a significant dent, enough of a dent that you see Republicans working to fight against it, but that the National Democratic Party is still hesitant to take on this playbook in large, in mass. It's it's very sort of, hmm, hmm. They don't think it's going to be effective. Whatever. It's going to hurt certain Demo- established Democrats' pockets. That's really this. Capitalism ruins everything. Now, we're talking about Herschel, so we have to talk about who he's running against. Raphael Warnock has been the Georgia senator. He beat what Kelly Loeffler in 2020 in a special election. He is a pastor or reverend at Martin Luther King's Church in Atlanta. He's been the uh, senator for the past uh, two years. You know, I- I- I'll give it to him. The little bit that I have paid attention, because I am not a Georgia resident, um, so I don't have to vote for the man, but the little bit that I have like heard of him speak and the way he goes about his sort of political uh, acumen, he's definitely more of the, the progressive side. Senatorial races are notably elitist. You tend to get senators who are lawyers, who are prosecutors, and even on the Democratic side, it is very difficult to get a true progressive politician, somebody who is like defund the police, abolish prisons, uh, you know, the right to body autonomy across gender, sexuality, and reproductive rights is quite difficult. It is a statewide race. And so these people might be darlings in their regions and their areas, and especially in the Southern United States, where you come from a blue dot city in a very red state. So, you know, for him to have won a recent senator race and be an elected senator, uh, 
you know, Rafi, he's he only, he, he only, he's not the same as Kamala, all right? Yeah, he's not quite the same as Cory Booker. I was like, who's the other man? That light-skinned Negro, okay? Now, the interesting thing in this is that Warnock has been very quiet and, well, not quiet, but he's been rather restrained in what you would think is like a treasure trove of controversy around Herschel Walker that he could possibly discuss. We'll pull up another New York Times article here. In a Georgia race rife with controversy, Warnock is a study in restraint. And part of that reason that he's had so much strength, constraint is because of this situation, his ex-wife, who he had a dispute with leading into the 2020 election. She claims oh, in March 2020 that he ran over her foot with his car. All right, so you walked over. So I'm like, move, and she won't move, and she's keeping the door open. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Chloe, just stay in the car. And I move, and I close the, my car door, get in the car, and I s start to move slightly, mm -hmm. thinking she's here. Clear. She yeah, I'm thinking she's clear, and I barely move. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she's screaming that I ran over her foot. I don't believe it. But I don't. Warnock, I, the senior pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, was not charged in the incident. Hospital first responders say his wife was able to wiggle her toes and there was no redness, bruising, or broken, broken bones. So, because of that, Warnock has not necessarily delved into using the abortion allegations that have come against Herschel Walker, using them as sort of a campaign strategy or tactic because obviously he recently went through a divorce, they had a domestic dispute, and you really don't want to give that any leverage by engaging in a sort of back and forth. Herschel has been running on a pro-life family values campaign. And his ex-wife, we'll put this video up, I couldn't find the, the original interview in the same way that I could like, I guess because Warnock's thing has happened a lot more recently and getting that scrub from the internet is a totally different ball game than getting an uh, early 2000s interview scrub. But parts of this interview that Cindy Grossman did about Herschel Walker's abuse has landed in some campaign, ad campaigns that are being produced by Republican packs? I don't know what's going on here. His eyes would become very evil. The guns and knives. I got into a few choking things with him. The first time he held the gun to my head, he held the gun to my temple and said, he was going to blow my brains out. Cindy Grossman, his first wife. And the, the interview has been noted in other articles. I just can't find the full interview, but how she has detailed the grotesque abuse and physical abuse that she faced from Herschel Walker. And then when we get back to his son, Christian, the, the last thing Christian posted on his Instagram, I think he's being more active on other platforms, but he's discussed the way his, he's, he's tired of being silent about his father. I stayed silent as the atrocities committed against my mom were downplayed. I stayed silent when it came out that my father, Herschel Walker, had all these random kids across the country, none of whom he raised. And you know my favorite issue to talk about is father absence. Surprise, because it affected me. That's why I talk about it all the time, because it affected me. Family values people, he has four kids, four different women, wasn't in the house raising one of them. He was out having sex with other women. Do you care about family values? I have a silent lie after lie after lie. The abortion card drops yesterday. It's literally his handwriting in the card. They say they have receipts, whatever. He gets on Twitter, he lies about it. Okay, I'm done. Done. Everything has been a lie. And so for the right to say I'm being suspicious for saying, hey, I'm, I'm done with the lies, when you all have been calling me saying, is this true about your dad? Gosh, we're not going to win Georgia and this candidate all. That's been you. You have no idea what I've been through in my life. You have no idea what me and my mom have survived. We could have ended this on day one. We haven't. I haven't told any stories. I'm just saying, don't lie. Don't lie on my mom. Don't lie on me. Don't lie on the lives you've destroyed and act like you're some moral family man. Y'all should care about that, conservatives. And then for people on the left to act as though I'm responsible for all of the things that he has done. I've talked about Father Epps. I've talked all these issues because they've been close to me. 
because they matter to me, because I went through it. That's why I've talked about it. So when you say, well, talk about your dad, but I am, I'm saying this behavior is atrocious. Don't come for me. You don't have to like my apology. You don't have to like me. You don't have to, I'm just saying I'm done with the lies. We were told at the beginning of this, he was going to get ahead of his past, hold himself accountable, all of these different things. And that would have been fine. Go ahead. He didn't do any of that. Everything's been a lie. Everything's been downplayed. Everything's been cutting corners. The whole thing. And who, who is, whose expense is that at? Me, my mom, as we're chased down by the media, uh, we're, we're terrorized, all these different things. Uh, uh, people are questioning my authenticity. I'm done. Don't lie. Don't put this on me. You, this is a candidate issue, not a me issue. I wouldn't have spoken out if there weren't all these lies every day. And just two more things I have to address and then I'm done with this buffoonery nut job land. This is atrocious. People on the right are pulling up that I did a campaign event with my dad last year. And they're saying, well, you supported him all last year and all this year. You look suspicious. No, no, no. You all have been calling me saying, why aren't you on the campaign trail with your dad? Why aren't you helping him out? This looks weird. You should go help him. And I've said to you calmly, I'm not getting involved. You don't know my family life. I did one event last year when we were told he was going to get ahead of his past and hold himself accountable. None of that happened. Everything's been a lie. So... For me to tell you I'm not getting involved, and then you also be flooding my DMs and calling me saying, I didn't know all this about your dad. We're going to lose the Senate race. And then when I simply say, I'm done with the lies, you go, well, Christian looks suspicious. Excuse me? That was quite interesting coming from Christian. But I think the thing is, like, you know, conservatives are really good for, like, giving a soundbite and having, like, a moment of clarity. And then doubling back on their politics. Christian isn't evaluating any of his own politics in aligning himself with a political party that has so thoroughly endorsed his father. And these accusations are about abortion allegations and Herschel Walker requiring women to get an abortion when he's claiming he's pro-life. The Georgia Senate candidate's ex-girlfriend says he wanted her to terminate a pregnancy in 2011 she chose to have their son instead. He has not been active in any of these women's lives. New woman alleges Herschel Walker urged her to have an abortion. And not only are they just getting these allegations, they're getting the cards that he's sending the women after, the checks he's writing to pay for the abortions. You have his son, who is a, a Republican-aligned conservative influencer, co-signing the fact that his father is not be holding himself accountable, is in fact lying and playing games about what his actual past is, but it's not hitting. Neil, let me play this soundbite from the New York Times of what happened during the primary. Detail in interviews where Walker in a fit of rage puts a gun to her temple and threatens to pull the trigger, threatens to kill her. Wow, that's pretty extraordinary. It is, and it's something that might otherwise disqualify a candidate with far less star power and far less influence than Herschel Walker. Mm -hmm. However, Herschel Walker has written a book about his struggles with mental illness and mentions this incident, saying that this was an unfortunate consequence of his struggles with mental health. And these concerns were tested a little bit during the primary. How so? So Gary Black, one of Herschel Walker's more formidable opponents in the primary, essentially sounded the alarm about Walker in his campaign. If he is the nominee for the Republicans, the race will be about Herschel Walker and his deficiencies from June to November. Essentially, Donald Trump endorsing Herschel, even in the face of all these allegations that are contrary to the politics that Walker is campaigning on allow him to keep going. And it's not just that like we have a, a Trump endorsing Herschel Walker, you then have other, you know, you have other Republican senators that are also endorsing this, this candidate and who are from the region and for Republicans who are very invested in the Georgia Senate, or the Georgia Senate races historically, Lindsey Graham does hold some sway because he's from the neighboring South Carolina and he's a longtime senator from South Carolina. And so this is great representation 
for uh, re- long held Republicans, especially for Republicans that have remained in the party even as Trump has become their leader. So Estet Herden's podcast has an episode called uh, The Grassroots Part One. They go back and they interview um, swing voters who participated in a poll. So voters who uh, previously voted for a Democrat likely president and this woman who says she's a Catholic, I don't know if she lives in Georgia or not, but she speaks on Georgia politics. She's Catholic, she's from the South. And she, at one point in time, supposedly, I think she was lying on her little voter poll. I think that lady just been a, like, you know, it's very much so, wow, whiteness is a disease. Whiteness is a disease. Because the way these people just go up for him. Square what you just told me about abortion mm-hmm. with your enthusiasm for Herschel Walker. Now, you see, you picked that one instance, right? You, you, you see, that's that's. I'm why just curious you, because I've just been reading why, a lot of stories about that's what That's why I usually don't talk done. to people on the left because that is what... Uh, no, 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 no. I just yeah. am asking you... I'm just okay, asking you I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm going to tell you. You have picked that one, and I, I don't know how much of that is true. I like what he says when he talks about being a patriot. I like what he says when he talks about what he wants to do for the country. I like that he is plain spoken, that he doesn't do a lot of fancy talking. I just like the way, I believe his heart, let me say that. I believe his heart. And I think that's what the left gets wrong about the right. Those people who go out and and protest at abortion, which I've never done at clinics, but I pray, I do pray that they close. I do, because I do think abortions are wrong. But that doesn't mean that I think everybody who's had an abortion is, is wrong. People can make mistakes. My gosh, I've made many, many mistakes in my life. But I can ask for forgiveness. So don't please don't put me, you know, why don't I hate Herschel Walker because of this stuff that's coming out for him? I think right now, and obviously, out of the two, who would I vote for? Come on. That's all you vote for is the best person, right? Mm. She's talking about religion, but is going to vote for Herschel Walker over the reverend. I guess um, as my last question, I, I actually wasn't even, I mean, that's one piece of it. But I'm also thinking about how much you talked about truth. And mm-hmm. at minimum, Walker is a candidate that has not been honest about a sort of events from his life. And how I'm wondering how you square that view about the need for politicians and truth with the reality of a candidate that has not provided it. So what are the options? <laughs> Don't vote? The, uh, what are the uh, options? The vote options for Warnock? I have talked yeah. to people who are thinking about voting for Warnock and Kemp. Those voters are true in Georgia. There's people who sit out the race entirely and vote by That's... sitting out. I guess I was asking you about all of those options. I mean, you're saying you would still make that affirmative choice for Walker. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, absolutely. He talks like Trump in that he talks about his love of the country. I don't know if the left understands that about us. That's what we love about Trump. And let's see who else talks like that. Oh, uh, uh, Jim Jordan, the representative. They truly, I feel like they truly, truly love this country. John McCain, his big thing was, and I reluctantly voted for him, his big thing was, I know how to work across the aisle. I don't want you to work across the aisle if it's not right. You know, it's fascinating the way the pro-life movement has really taken a hold of the Republic. Not that it didn't always have a hold. You know, when you look at the history of the idea that the Republicans or rather to say, because we went from Democrats when the social security act was passed and welfare was implemented and by a Democrat president and you see Southern Democrats leave the party, become Republicans. And what was historically known as a more liberal Republican party becomes a conservative party that aligns itself with evangelist Christians And when they were first taking on this idea of we want to hold the conservatives, regardless of party identity, because before that there's Federalists and the Whigs and all that, this idea that we have the right to own black bodies. 
we have the right to own black bodies post emancipation comes into we have the right to own the labor of black people we have the right to own the labor of black people then transforms with the advent of welfare and the small class of African Americans who are able to effectively um, ascend to middle class status. And then it morphs into, well, we own the reproductive rights. And I mean, it is interesting because if you get into black woman history and all that, re the reproductive control of a black woman's body has always been a running theme. And so this line from we want to hold on to slavery to we are pro-life, it just, it, it, it do really go hand in hand. But the way that in 2022, this ultra conservatism around making abortions illegal is that big of a deal to a woman who's probably past menopause. I'm like, girl, these Republicans are crazy. They try to take away my rights. Say it with your chest. Nah, but you got to walk the middle line. You know, you got to walk the middle line. I'm just like, what is happening here? They like, you know, all we, we have very key policy changes that we want to enforce. We don't care to explain them. We don't care how wrong they are. We have people that can profit from it. People that have been brainwashed into believing it. And we are going to enact it. And that's it.